So chances are we've all had the disappointment of finding a great flight, whether we're paying with cash or reward points, only to just have hundreds of dollars in taxes, fees, and surcharges added at the end. In this video, we'll look at how we can minimize the fees on our flight bookings, regardless of whether you pay for the ticket in cash or via points redemption. This video will be broken up into six different parts, and I guarantee you that by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what you're gonna have to do for your next holiday booking such that you can save hundreds of dollars on your airfare costs. So the first part of this video is going to talk about what the main differences are between taxes, fees, and fuel surcharges. Now you can break all of these costs into two categories. Taxes and fees is what is charged by governments and airport authorities. Fuel surcharges, otherwise known as carrier imposed surcharges, are charged by the airline themselves. Now when it comes to the overall fees that you have to pay for your airfare, there are a number of reasons as to why it might differ from flight to flight. Firstly, the taxes and fees charged will differ from country to country based on what laws that government has passed. For example, the UK passed an air passenger duty tax that was introduced around 10 years ago to take into account the carbon emissions from departing flights. The distance traveled also has a large impact. If you're traveling from Melbourne to Sydney, then it's going to cost a lot less in fees compared to flying from Melbourne to Paris. The cabin class you travel in also plays a part. So for example, more premium cabin classes like premium economy or business class will be charged higher taxes and fees compared to economy class. And finally, different airlines charge different fuel charges as ultimately this is up to them to decide what they charge. Now, all of these taxes, fees, and fuel surcharges apply to all tickets, regardless of whether you paid for them in cash or via points redemption. However, flights paid by cash usually have these fees factored into the advertised price that you're paying, whereas with a reward flight, they're usually added on as an additional fee that you have to pay on top of the reward points needed to redeem that flight. Now, the main factor in determining these costs is going to be your departure airport. There may be some other minor costs depending on your destination country, or if you're transiting through another airport to get to your final destination. But ultimately, the largest impact is going to be from the city from where you're departing from. So in the next part of the video, let's determine the differences in the fees that you'll be charged when departing different airports in order to see which ones you should be flying in and out of. Now, to help me determine what fees you'd be paying, I'm gonna be using Google's ITA matrix, which is a tool that breaks down airfare costs, which we'll talk about later in the video. So full of flights, I'll always be looking to search for a direct flight from that country's departure city to Dubai in business class for a random date in the future. Obviously, if we were searching for an economy class flight, then the taxes and fees would be even lower. However, this is just an example to illustrate the difference in fees based on the departure city. So firstly, let's look at the different taxes and fees you'd be paying across Australia. So for Melbourne, when we look at the airfare breakdown, these three line items that reference the Australian charges are all the taxes and fees charged by the Australian government and airport authorities, which equates to just around $94. When we look at Sydney, they only have two line items with the total charges adding up to around $104. So here's an example that you can see where the taxes and fees charged are different between the states within Australia. Now I won't show you me going through and reviewing every single airfare across each capital city, but to summarize, these are different taxes and fees you need to pay based on which airport you're departing from in Australia. All of the taxes and fees range between $80 to $100 per flight, with Perth being the cheapest, which makes sense because it's the flight with the shortest flight distance, whereas Brisbane has the most expensive. Honestly, there is very little difference in fees imposed by the different airports in Australia. Now, compared to other countries, Australia comes in the middle in terms of how much taxes and fees you'd be expecting to pay. So I guess the next question is, globally, what are the best countries that we should be departing? from. Now, in order to complete this, I basically individually searched up flights from every popular airport from around the world that people might be considering flying out from, 
And then because of the currency conversion of that airfare, I also had to convert that back to Australian dollars. So if you could help me and hit that like button, that would be very appreciated. Now, if we're looking to fly out from Asia Pacific, then these are some of the best airports and countries to fly out of. Shanghai is the cheapest with taxes of just around $21, whilst departing from Bangkok, Vietnam and South Korea are also good choices with the taxes and fees around that $30 mark. The countries with the highest fees in the Asia Pacific were Hong Kong and Singapore at around $70, with Tokyo being the middle at around that $40 point. So now that we've covered Asia Pacific, let's look at some of the best airports and countries to fly out from in Europe. So flying out of Istanbul in Turkey is by far the cheapest airport within Europe, with taxes and fees only amounting to $30. Flying out of Italy is also a pretty good option with Rome and Milan both having their taxes and fees around that $50 to $60 mark. And Brussels and even some of the countries like Sweden and Frankfurt are also decent countries to fly out of with that middle of the range taxes and fees. Countries that you should try to avoid include Germany and Amsterdam at around $115. And then if you're planning to fly out of Paris, you'll be looking to pay over $200 in taxes and fees. Now, if you thought the taxes and fees in Paris were bad, that's not even the worst. Because the country that you should absolutely avoid flying out of is the UK. The UK introduced what is called a air passenger duty tax over a decade ago to take into account the cost of carbon emissions from departing airlines. If you choose to depart from the UK, it's going to cost you over $400 in taxes and fees. Compare that to paying $40 if you were to depart from Spain, you're essentially paying 10 times more in taxes and fees just to depart from the UK. Now, whilst the taxes in the UK is extremely expensive, you can avoid it in a few scenarios. Firstly, if you're flying into the UK, you will avoid paying that tax because the ADP is only charged to departing flights. And if you're making an international connection or a domestic connection through the UK, then you're also exempt from paying it. So if you're planning a trip to the Europe or the UK, then plan it such that you fly into the UK and then out of another country with lower taxes and fees. For example, you might fly into London and then fly out of another country like Rome or Milan. Now, the best tool to use to estimate the taxes and fees that you'd have to pay that we touched on earlier is the Google's ITA matrix. Simply enter your origin, your destination, date and class, and then you'll be able to see a full breakdown of your airfare. So I'm searching for a flight from Melbourne to Singapore in business class, and I get the following cost breakdown for a flight with Singapore Airlines. The first line that you see here is the base airfare. You'll pretty much avoid this cost if you are redeeming points for an award ticket. The next three lines are the taxes and fees charged by the Australian government and the Melbourne airport. And then the last line is the carrier imposed fuel surcharge. Now, fuel surcharges, as I mentioned earlier in the video, are determined by the airline themselves, which means that depending on who you decide to fly with can also end up saving you hundreds of dollars in fuel surcharges. Which brings us to the next part of the video, which is what are the best airlines to travel with? So say you wanted to fly to Japan. Did you know that you'd pay less in fuel surcharges if you use your velocity points for a flight operated by Anna rather than a flight operated by Virgin Australia themselves? For a one-way business class reward flight from Sydney to Haneda Airport by Virgin Australia, this is gonna cost you 72,000 reward points plus around $196 in taxes. Whereas instead, if I took a flight that was operated by Anna, it would cost me slightly more reward points at 78,000 points. However, I would only be paying $91 in taxes and fees, saving me over $100. Now, if you're booking a reward flight, chances are you are either booking them with Velocity or Qantas. Among the two major airlines, Velocity generally has lower fuel surcharges attached to its bookings. If you end up booking a reward flight with one of their partners, partner airlines, then some airlines are definitely better than others because some don't charge any fuel surcharges. So if you're booking a reward flight with Velocity, then United, Virgin Atlantic, Air Canada, 
Anna, Hawaiian Airlines, and South African Airlines all don't have carrier surcharges. Now, when it comes to Qantas, unfortunately, most of its partner airlines has fuel surcharges that Qantas then passes on to the end consumer. But a select few don't, or at least have reasonable charges. And these include American Airlines, Fiji Airways, Bin Air, and then also Japan Airlines. Singapore Airlines is another great airline to choose because they don't charge any fuel surcharges on any of their own flights, which can potentially save you hundreds of dollars depending on where you're traveling to. The only downside is that it's usually harder and far more expensive to acquire crisp flyer miles. So now that we know some of the best airlines to fly with, let's look at the worst airline that we should absolutely avoid when booking flights with. And that airline is Emirates. Now Emirates is known to have some of the highest carrier charges across the entire airline industry, costing you hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars per flight. To illustrate, let's look at a return first class journey from Sydney to Paris for two people. It'll cost you 455,000 Qantas points plus $3,857 in taxes and fees. Now of the full $3,857 in taxes and fees, $372 represents genuine taxes and fees, but the close to $3,500 remaining is entirely carrier charges. Now remember that's per person per return trip. So you're paying close to $7,000 in taxes and fees for your reward flight. That's definitely no small surcharge fee. That's practically paying for a flexible economy flight return for like three to four people. So when planning your next trip, chances are you will be departing from a city from Australia. Whether you're leaving from Sydney to Melbourne, it's not going to make that much of a difference in terms of the taxes and fees you're gonna to have to pay. What will make a difference, however, is which airline you fly with and which frequent flyer program you use. Try to fly with an airline that doesn't charge fuel surcharges, or at a minimum, just make sure you avoid Emirates. Don't really worry about which airport you're also transiting through or your final destination, as your costs won't vary that much. The main factor is going Going to be your departure airport, not the transit or destination airport. So when you're deciding which country you should be departing from at the end of your holiday, that's the most important decision. If you're doing a multi-destination trip, which most people tend to do, especially if you're traveling all the way to Europe, then you'll want to fly into an expensive airport like Paris or the UK, and then fly out of a cheaper airport like Istanbul or Rome. Now, I really hope this video has helped you better plan out your future flights so that you can save more in taxes, fees, and fuel surcharges. Now, if you've learned anything new at all throughout this video, it would be much appreciated if you could hit that like button down below because this tells YouTube to push it out to more people. Also, if you've come this far in the video, drop me a comment with the word money in it so I know you've watched the whole video. Now, if you're interested in learning how you can use credit card points to redeem flights to basically travel around the world for free, then make sure you check out this video right here.